and welcome back to Otaku No Video as always. Thank you very much for joining me where today I'm reviewing a very unusual little film. Actually, a pretty big film called The Belladonna of Sadness. Actually, just Belladonna of Sadness. It's a film uh, produced by Osamu Tezuka's production company, Mushi Pro, Mushi Productions, back in the 70s. It does not look like anime. <clears throat> as you can tell, this is the trailer over here. There's a certain genre of film that I like to call bad things happening to good people. This film very much belongs to that genre. And make no mistake, this is a film about very, very bad things. It's a very adult film, complete with sexual violence and some very sexual imagery. Um, if you titter at that kind of thing, if you know, metaphor intended to evoke sexuality, you just find funny, avoid this film. Uh, in keeping with Japanese obscenity standards, you will never actually see any naughty bits, but they use a lot of visual imagery that absolutely um, uh, reflects those things. Where there is absolute, where you you have, it's very clear what's going on, uh, including some outright bizarre imagery. Let's just be honest. Um, it is also a very artsy film. That can be good or bad, depending on your tastes and preferences. It alternates these very well-drawn, very beautifully animated uh, moments with some minute-long pans across still images, where very little is going on. However, those images are themselves fascinating and interesting to look at. This is not a film that takes the cheap way out. It is always taking the most artistic approach possible with a particular image or scene. Sometimes it does save on some budget, certainly. Uh, but this film is pure art. Its makers do not pander. The plot is also easy to understand, especially thanks to a narrator. But it is a stark symbol-filled movie of these contrasting art styles and sometimes very abstract images. Um, that is one of the, I would argue, strengths of the film. It's the kind of thing you can sit back and watch and think about and look at and pay attention to the actual images they're showing, while at the same time, because the plot is straightforward, you're not lost. You understand how these images and symbols fit with the story they're telling. And that allows you to interpret those symbols. A lot of artsy films make this mistake that they will just go very abstract and stay abstract. Belladonna has this strong, clear story that it's following and things connect to that. I must point out that, again, visually, they follow this very European style of illustration. It was animated entirely in Japan, as far as I know. All of the credits that I've, I've come across are Japanese. Um, so it's, you know, you could argue this is not technically anime, and I would be willing to, you know, uh, debate that with you. I mean, you, you could certainly go either direction. Um, but either way, it's a remarkable film. And it's the kind of film that I think is most easily made at a studio, studio like Mushi, at a Japanese studio, where they've had to spend a lot of time figuring out how to tell stories with limited budgets. Where there is a focus on how to tell a story with images, as opposed to with, you know, character-driven animation and, and personality-driven movement. This is an unusual film and a remarkable film, and that's one of the reasons why I'm reviewing it, because I think it's one of those things that is... Um, that sticks with you. You may not like it, but you won't soon forget it, and I think that's one of the best examples of art and what art should do for you. Um, it's a remarkable film, and... Um, It's different, and I think that's pretty cool.